Why Africa is building a great green wall in the Sahara Desert. Just below the southernmost edge of the Sahara Desert, 11 nations are constructing a wall of trees that runs from east to west across Africa. The objective is to stop desertification in order to combat the effects of climate change. An 8,000-kilometer-long natural wonder of the world is what the Great Green Wall Movement, which is led by Africans, aims to grow across the entire surface of Africa. Over 10 years and 15% completed, the initiative is already restoring life to Africa's degraded landscapes on an unprecedented scale, giving millions of people who live along its path food security, employment opportunities, and a reason to stay. Climate change, drought, famine, conflict, and migration are just a few of the numerous urgent threats that the African continent and the rest of the world must contend with. The wall appears to be a viable solution. The Great Green Wall, which will be finished, will be three times bigger than the Great Barrier Reef and the largest living structure in the world. Please click the subscribe button and the notification bell before we continue climbing this wall so you won't miss out on more incredible content like this. Walls have historically been divisive. Most of the time, their objective is to keep the undesirable individuals from mixing with the desirable ones by separating them. However, a massive wall being built in Africa is inspiring individuals from 20 different nations to work together on a project for the benefit of all. The Great Green Wall is an ambitious plan to cover about 6,000 miles 8, kilometers, of land with a thicket of drought-resistant trees at the southern edge of the Sahara Desert, an area known as the Sahel. From the Atlantic to the Red Sea, it spans the entire width of the continent. In the past, the region was lush and mostly covered in savanna and grassland. However, protracted droughts have altered its composition. According to the project website, the Sahel is currently more than anywhere else on Earth on the front line of climate change, and millions of locals are already facing its devastating impact. Due to the area's aridity and lack of vegetation, there are food and water shortages, increased migration as residents seek out better neighborhoods, and conflicts over diminishing natural resources. The African Union is in charge of the project known as the Great Green Wall, also known as the Great Green Wall of the Sahara and the Sahel. Known in French as La Grande Muraille Verte pour la Sahara et la Sahel. It was originally intended to stop the Sahara from spreading and combat desertification in the Sahel region. Since then, the modern Green Wall has developed into a program that encourages water harvesting methods, protects vegetation, and enhances indigenous land use techniques with the goal of establishing a mosaic of verdant and fruitful landscapes throughout North Africa. The project is a reaction to the dual impact of drought and resource degradation in rural areas. It aims to increase food security while also assisting communities in mitigating and adapting to climate change. By 2039, the Sahel's population is predicted to double, underscoring the significance of preserving food production and environmental protection in the region. In one of the world's poorest regions, the Sahel region of Africa, on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert, the Great Green Wall is emerging. The Sahel is more than any other region of the world at risk from the devastating effects of climate change, and millions of residents are already experiencing these effects. Numerous negative effects include recurring droughts, food shortages, conflicts over depleting natural resources, and large-scale migration to Europe. Communities, however, are retaliating from Djibouti in the east to Senegal in the west. Life has begun to return to the land since the initiative's inception in 2007, improving food security, creating jobs, and bringing stability to people's lives. History Richard Street Barb Baker, a British explorer, went on an expedition to the Sahara in the 1950s. Street Barb suggested a green front to serve as a 50-kilometer deep, 30 miles, tree buffer to contain the expanding desert during his 40,000-kilometer, 25,000 miles expedition. The concept was brought up again in 2002 at a special summit held to commemorate the World Day to combat desertification and drought in N'Djamena, the capital of Chad. 
It was approved at the seventh ordinary session of the Conference of Leaders and Heads of States of the Community of the Sahel-Saharan States, which took place in Ouagadougou, the capital of Burkina Faso, from June 1st to 2nd, 2005. The Great Green Wall for the Sahara and the Sahel Initiative was approved by the African Union in 2007. An integrated multi-sectoral approach resulted from the lessons learned from the Green Dam of Algeria and the Green Wall of China. The project, which started out as a tree planting initiative, eventually turned into a development programming tool. The project to address the social, economic, and environmental effects of land degradation and desertification was overseen by CHSG in 2007. The Pan-African Agency of the Great Green Wall was subsequently established by the nations of Burkina Faso, Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sudan, and Chad. In September 2012, the African Ministerial Conference on Environment, in short AMCEN, adopted a unified regional strategy. The Great Green Wall is a flagship program that, in the words of AMCEN, will help achieve the Rio Plus 20 goal of a land degradation neutral world, which is the objective of the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development. In order to expand on the Great Green Wall for the Sahara and the Sahel Initiative, the European Union and the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization introduced the Action Against Desertification Program in 2014. This initiative was a partnership with African and other regional partners. Nigeria established a temporary organization to aid the Great Green Wall development. The Burkinade people and the green search engine Ecosia have been working together since 2014. In 2017, Ecosia expanded its campaign to Ethiopia, and the following year it did the same in Senegal. As of September 2021, Ecosia reported that it had planted over 15,117,046 trees and restored 14,137 hectares, 34,930 acres in Burkina Faso, over 1,424,748 trees and restored 300 hectares, 740 acres, in Senegal, and over 9,963,757 trees and restored 3,609 hectares, 8,920 acres in Ethiopia. 2015's Drylands Monitoring Week evaluated the state of dryland measurement and sparked cooperation for extensive thorough monitoring. Planning, including working with the local population and selecting vegetation, was followed by plantings and land restoration. 21 nations had GGW-related projects in 2016 that included farmer-supported natural regeneration. In Burkina Faso, bare land restoration has been successfully demonstrated, though security is a concern due to terrorist activity. The BBC stated that Senegal had made the most progress in September 2017. With significant advancements made in Nigeria, Senegal, and Ethiopia, 15% of the wall was finished as of March 2019. There have been over 11 million trees planted in Senegal, 12 million acres, 49,000 square kilometers of degraded land have been restored in Nigeria at 4.9 million hectares, and 15 million have been recovered in Ethiopia, 37 million acres, 150,000 square kilometers. By September 2020, only 4 million hectares, 9.8 million acres, of the Great Green Wall's planned area had been planted, according to reports. With 5.5 billion seedlings planted, Ethiopia has achieved the greatest success, while Chad has only planted 1.1 million. The likelihood that the 12 million Senegalese trees will survive has been questioned. Goals the project includes the Saharan enclaves and voices, as well as its northern and southern borders. In order to increase the effectiveness of current mechanisms, such as the Comprehensive African Agricultural Development Program, the Environmental Program, CAADP, of NIPAD, and regional, sub-regional, and national action programs to combat desertification, the GGWSI intends to strengthen them through coordination and synergy efforts.
The regional harmonized strategy places a strong emphasis on collaboration between parties, integrating new initiatives into existing ones, sharing lessons learned, especially through South-South cooperation and technology transfer, local participation and ownership of actions, and creating more comprehensive global planning. By 2030, the $8 billion project hopes to restore 100 million hectares, 250 million acres, 1 million square kilometers of degraded land, which will generate 350,000 rural jobs and remove 250 million tons, 280 million short tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Children and adults of all ages work together to plant acacia trees that are mostly resistant to drought, as well as vegetable and fruit gardens. The project has been underway for just over 10 years and is currently 15% finished. The project's efforts to green the desolate area have an impact on more than just desertification and land degradation in the area. The millions of people who live there have found food and water security, improved well-being, more jobs, even boosting gender equality as women have found work, and a reason to stay in addition to the land beginning to come back to life. An international symbol. Not just the Sahel can benefit from the Great Green Wall. It serves as a universal metaphor for humanity triumphing over its greatest threat, our rapidly deteriorating environment. It demonstrates that if we can cooperate with nature, even in difficult environments like the Sahel, we can overcome challenges and create a better world for future generations. Millions of people in the Sahel region are having their lives changed by the Great Green Wall, which is doing more than just growing trees and plants. The UN Sustainable Development Goals, also known as the SDGs, a global agenda that seeks to realize a more just and sustainable world by 2030, are significantly aided by the Great Green Wall. Thank you, and that's all for today. Hope you were able to learn something useful. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments section below, and also like and subscribe for more videos like this. <laughs>